So today is going to be all about power. Now, last episode, I ended up building this tower you see behind me specifically for power. It is the Tower of Power. And today we're going to be diving into this. Um, now, I'm going to be setting up some cabling to get up here. The main thing we're going to need is refined storage crafters. That's honestly all we're going to need to set up the auto crafting for this. I have a feeling this is going to be pretty easy to get set up. So now that I have cabling all the way up here, we can just pop up here. You can see cabling. Oh, and a mob. <laughs> nice. Um, now that we have that, uh, we need to kind of just get started on all of the basics that power requires and also me to kind of explain why I'm even getting into power. Um, the reason is I'm getting into power is because there's things like builders and things like that that I actually want to get into that is going to cost a, uh, a little bit more power than, let's say, this little setup can generate. And I can still utilize lava. Um, and I have noticed that with me flying around, it is putting a little bit of strain on my power network. So power is actually going to be pretty nice for not only um, the future stuff, but the angel ring and potential upgrades that I plan on putting on this. So to get started with this, I think auto crafting is going to be the way to go uh, because of some of the crazy stuff that you have to do over and over again, such as the dielectric paste. Um, this stuff, if you're doing it, you know, the most efficient way is to utilize lava buckets. We could do this, I believe. Um, but I guarantee the bucket craft is going to just say, hey, you're going to need like 15 buckets. So I think the way to go about this is by creating a ton of patterns. For one, the dielectric rods and the horizontal version. Um, also making sure that we can generate blaze powder. So I think this is probably a good way to go. Also, I'm going to need, let's see, patterns. <laughs> We're probably going to need some patterns to get this to work. Um, I could pulverize this would probably be a better way to go about this. But for right now, we're just going to stick with this. So all of this get started. There we go. We have dielectric paste. That's the hardest part. Um, and then we need to work on getting this. So we are going to need iron bars. Good, good old iron bars. This is going to utilize that dielectric paste. Got to keep in mind all of the different ways of generating this stuff. And instead of me just converting one rod to the other. I don't know if there's a way. Oh, I guess they can be converted back and forth, but I just want to generate the rods per. And then right here, the casing is very important. And the next step is going to be making all of the, the different parts that's going to power things. So we're going to need an energizing orb and we're going to need to get started on the energizing rods for which the power is then sent to the energizing orb. So these things take power from a source and they send it to the energizing orb. So I need to get that set up. Um, and we're going to be using all of this to generate the blazing crystals, the uh, ni uh, niotic crystal, the spirited, and the nitro, and ender core later on, which is used for wireless power within this mod because it has capabilities to do that and even send power to you, similar to Flux Networks. And then the charged snowball is a giant bomb, uh, which is fantastic and super fun. Um, so all of this stuff, energized steel, that, that's going to be the first thing we need to automate. Uh, it does seem like we have essence for these things. Um, that's kind of cool, actually. If we could generate essence for these, then we wouldn't have to worry about much automation. But I want to make the automation for this as simple as possible. So first things first, after I craft all of these things. So if I go into power now, uh, let's go ahead and throw these in to a crafter. So now that I'm looking at the power things, let's go ahead and set up a auto crafting recipe for a few of the basics. Um, for one, we definitely need the energizing orb. Uh, this I can just go ahead and request a craft for because we're only going to need one of them for now. So I can hold down control and I can go ahead and request the items for these. Should propagate very quickly. And there we go. Energizing orb. Um, same thing goes for the other things that I don't really want to set up an auto craft for just yet. And that is the starter and basic. Now the starter, I don't recommend going for, but you do need the starter in order to make the basic. And this is going to require these capacitors and the capacitors are another thing that I believe I want, um, I want crafted. So right here, we need to make sure we have auto craft for that. I think I have redstone blocks on auto craft. And then we also need to make sure to downscale that. 
and also to upscale that into a larger form because these are going to be used so much later on. And look at that, perfect. It feels it feels uh, one of our uh, crafters, our iron crafters, perfectly. Okay, so power. Starter is what we're going to craft first. I'm going to go ahead and just make one of them for right now and then upgrade that into a basic. It is going to require a block of quartz. Um, so let's grab quartz. And we should have plenty of that because we've been saving for a while. So there's our block of quartz and we will generate our starter. Now this is gonna require us to have made the starter. So let's go ahead and craft it now that we have it and then we'll have a basic, right? And that's gonna require a little bit of crafting. So all of this, and it, yes, this would be very repetitive without some sort of auto craft for all of those individual components. I recommend getting some of that started. So now that we have a basic energized rod, this can transfer uh, a maximum of 400 RF per tick out to our energizing orb. That's plenty for getting started. And I'm gonna use a point to transfer that power to this, uh, this energizing rod. I think we can do it directly. Actually, I might wanna test. Let's go ahead and place this down. Make sure our network is selected and then place this on top. And yes, it, it will power directly from there. So that makes things perfect. Now we do need a crafter. Uh, just a regular crafter, I think will be just fine. And I got to request all of these components in order to get this started. Now let's go ahead and get this set up. So right here's our crafter, here's our energizing orb. And right here I have an importer. So just for right now, I'm gonna place the energizing orb right here. And this is going to allow me to get some cables. And this isn't going to look the best just yet, but we will get this working here soon. Um, let's go ahead and go down here. I want to put an importer on the bottom. This is how we're going to get the items out of this. On top of this is going to be a crafter. Um, and I think I, not, I don't want the crafter inside. I want it on top. I'm going to need the wrench to rotate this. And there we go. And uh, then we just need to get some cabling right here to make sure this is hooked up and powered. Okay, this looks a little wonky, right? It definitely looks wonky, but this should work perfect. Um, so inside here, I have my energized. We have our base power, right? And then this is going to go right here. And technically this should be linked, but there is a wrench from power that is best to definitely get your hands on. So when you hold this, you can link these together. Now there is a link mode, as you can see they're linked up, but if they weren't linked up, you would click here, right? You would set link, right click, and then link. So you'd make sure they're linked together. Perfect, so next step is to get this energized still crafted. And this is the recipe for it. So we should be able to head down here and create a power uh, pattern for this. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this is like one of the easiest ways to do this. So all it's all we need to say is, hey, uh, we're gonna need iron and gold and then energized steel is gonna be produced. And so just like that, we have this produced. And I think blocks of this can be produced as well at a time. Honestly, better way to potentially do this, um, but I'm gonna go right now with just the basic single item just so we can get this and show how it works. Um, so let's place this inside and I'm hoping that this works. Let's go ahead and request 64. And let's see if this is only gonna propagate the amount. Ooh, it's not propagating the exact amount, which is kind of concerning. Huh, I was under the assumption, this is what you get for assuming, that it's only going to put put the uh, amount of items that it can accept in. Not the case. Hmm. Now, from time to time, I always run into things like this, right? Where I think something might work and then I put it into practice and then come to find out it doesn't work. Um, so a way for me to fix this, I think, is unfortunately going to be to have to add another step or steps in order to get this to work. Now, this can produce redstone. It can, it can output redstone when it has uh, items in it, but I'm actually gonna be skipping the whole redstone side of things 
And I think I'm going to go the route of Laser AO. And the reason I'm going to link going Laser AO instead of any other mod um, is because for things like we're doing right now that require two different items, Laser IO can handle that. If I was to go the route of modular routers with this, it would become a little bit more uh, tedious because modular routers only has a single um, item input. So uh, for this, or a single item buffer, this right here, I can hook up to like a barrel, for example, and I can have all of the items sent to a barrel uh, from the crafter, right? And we can even have the crafter down here so it's a little bit more uh, hidden. So let's take that same crafter that we had, place it down here, and then place the, the original pattern in that we had made, place that inside here. And then same thing, except I'm going to lower this down one. So let's go ahead and lower this down. Oops, looks like I've moved that. Oh well. <laughs> let's go ahead and lower this down. Um, and let's see, we can place that right here. And I'm going to place a block. Everything goes into my bag. Let's actually turn that off for right now. Perfect. Okay, and so we'll place this here. That way it's nice and level on the floor. And then I'll place this on the bottom. The importer should be fine with the way it, it, it's working. Um, and there shouldn't be a real problem with the importer being there. Because uh, it's not going to import anything unless it's done, right? So we should be fine there. Okay, so with that, now that we have a barrel and a crafter, we're going to have to get into laser I.O. Because laser I.O. will then pull from this and is going to send to a node that we are going to have directly above this. Now to get into laser I.O., I highly recommend setting up auto crafts for this as well, as uh, it requires a lot of crafting of items uh, in order to get the stuff you're going to need. For example, item cards, for, they're, they're going to require a logic chip. Logic chip requires you to craft it and then smelt it. Laser I.O. is going to require like a laser connector and everything, all kinds of stuff that you're going to be required to make. Um, and so you definitely want to get these things on auto craft. And so I've opened up another crafter over here to uh, harness all of these items. So let's get into laser IO because uh, this mod is interesting in the fact that it's sort of like um, it, it's sort of like Ender IO's piping, uh, except it's all kind of in one block and uh, you use wireless sort of capabilities to transfer items. Um, so, right here is a node, that is what we're going to need, we're actually going to need two nodes, one for our inventory that's going to be sending items, and then one for the inventory that's going to be receiving items. In uh, the, our case, it is items, but you could do fluid and redstone and energy all in the same, same go. Um, I'm also going to need some filters, so this will craft four filters, but the thing I'm going to really need is a counting filter. This is important, so let's go ahead and make ourselves a counting filter. Looks like we're going to need one of those. There we go. Counting filter. And then, of course, we are going to need an item card for each area that we're going to be importing and exporting from. So we need a card for pulling items and a card for sending items. And that's basically it uh, to get a simple setup going for this. I mean, all we got to do is place a node on top of here, just like that, and a node here. The good thing is... Um, we should be able to automate this further and other recipes by just using more crafters with the same setup that we have going here with like an, a buffer inventory and then the node sending to this because this can actually um, hook up to multiple different nodes in this same area and of course have our power going to it. So how do we set this up? Well, first thing we need to do is link these together. So you just shift right click here and then right click, and now these two are connected wirelessly. Pretty cool, even though there's a little wire going between them. Um, now, this has direction, so we can select what direction this is facing, or you can click on the direction that you want to access directly. So for example, I can click on the bottom of this. As you can see, it automatically goes to the down, and I'm going to put an item card in here to go down to the down. And you can see there's a line drawn to the barrel, meaning it's connected. Same for this, even though it's a little harder to get to the bottom. So we know that down is that. And so we put this card in, and as you can see, it's connected. Now, both of these right now are set, because when you right-click this, you can access what you can do. It's set to insert. And we don't want that. We want this one set to extract to pull the items. So that way, it pulls the items and looks for an insert card that's connected to the network. And I would say a network is 
uh, multiple nodes that are connected via the laser, as you can see here. And uh, this one with, an, uh, with the extract, it is specifically looking for just any channel that is currently set to zero. It is looking to extract items from there and deposit it in here. So if I go ahead and put an item in here, it's going to automatically pull it out of the chest and put it inside of the energizing orb, right? Because it's an in inventory. Um, but here's the problem. We're going to have the same issue. If I put all these in here, it's going to continue to just pump all the items in and we do, do not want it to do that. Um, so we have to specify how we want this to function. And that's where this counting filter comes in handy. And this counting filter, by the way, is fantastic. So inside of our insert, we can actually set a filter. Um, and on this filter, I want to define that only one iron and one gold are allowed to be inside this inventory at any given time. And so now if I put all of these in here, you can see that it's only going to allow these two items in. And then our product that we actually want is created. This is what I was hoping that the crafter would do. I was hoping that it would recognize uh, and not just dump all of the items in. But of course, I think it's uh, looking at it as if it's an inventory here and uh, it's just dumping all the items in. You know, unfortunate. It works differently for different mods, which is why I was under the assumption that it might work because the dissolution chamber, it does work that way. Very interesting that it does it here, but it doesn't do it for this. Um, so back up here. Oh, of course we have some enemies. There's, there's where my wolf went that died on me last episode. Um, yeah, getting lights in here is probably a good idea as well. Lamp, lantern. Yeah, let, let's put a couple lanterns on the wall. <laughs> it's like every time I turn around, because I have night vision on, yeah, we're getting wrecked. Okay, so with that set up, I should now be able to request these items from Powa like I was originally intending to be able to do. So let's go ahead and craft 64 and it's going to prep all the items for that and it's going to fill the barrel with all the items but we now don't have that problem it's now just going to continue to craft that is perfect that is exactly what i want now how do we go about working this out for other items like what if we request this but then uh we request another one now this is where i think priorities come into play um so we would have to give this some sort of priority system and this might be where things get a little bit more complicated. So for me to try and better explain this, let, let me see if we can actually do this and utilize the single crafter here. So um, I wanna be able to take four blaze or actually just do a single blaze rod. I think that would be much simpler. Let's just see if we can do a single blaze rod into this system here. And so all we gotta do is add that to this. So that way we're using the same sort of setup for, the, for all of these, that would, that would be fantastic, right? But what if a process is, is still going? Um, will it interrupt? Well, I think there is a way that we can potentially change priori priorities and make it so that way this has a higher priority than the other. Um, but it also kind of has to do with some speed and stuff, right, as well. Now, I can leave this the same. This is just set to extract. It's just, it's just pulling out. That's all it's simply doing. Um, but I think where we might run into an issue is if I set another card in here, um, what it's going to do is we're going to set, hey, I want one blaze, blaze rod. What I'm thinking it's probably going to do is it's going to ignore this. And if two requests are done at the same time, it's going to get a little bit messy. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to power and let's, for example, craft out. Let's see. Let's do 64 of these and also 64 of these and see what happens. Ah, as you can see, it throws the blaze rod in there because it is set up on a technically another channel. Um, and the priority system is going to work differently. So this is where I think I'm going to have to have a different crafter. Uh, I'm going to have to have a different energizing orb for every single one of these crafts in order for this to take place. I wish it didn't work this way, 
but this is how it does work. So yes, I think I have a solution for this, but yeah, we are gonna need multiple energizing orbs and multiple ways of powering those energizing orbs. It should all still fit in here relatively simple, uh, but if we started a craft like we just did, um, I do need to mention uh, that you're going to want to clear and cancel crafts. So I was using this to test, but you're gonna need some sort of uh, monitor. For example, I have a crafting monitor uh, on this super wireless grid that we made a while ago. You can actually rotate with this one. Um, but yeah, I just use this to cancel the, uh, the operations. Otherwise it can mess with your crafting operations down the road, which would not be ideal. Now, don't get me wrong. This particular setup that we have will work. Um, so long as you're not crafting multiples at a time, not so, so long as you're not requesting two, uh, two crafts at, at once. So for, for example, if I want to make some of that blaze, right, it will work. Um, but I'm, I need to make sure that, Hey, I'm only doing 64 of these per, uh, specifically, and I'm not going to craft anything else until these are done. Um, which these take a little bit of time, uh, when we're just using a, a standard laser here. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to preface that. I think what we're going to end up doing is we're going to have multiple importers on just enough energizing orbs for the processes that we're going to be using. So as you can see, I have this set up and I think this is going to work uh, really, really well. And uh, if I need to add anything later on, I always can. Um, now, getting all the items set up, that's going to be pretty simple. But as you can see, I have five set here. And I'm thinking of using sort of a chandelier looking thing. Uh, I have some of those blazing that I made. That's going to go right here, except for in the middle is going to be my point. And then I am just going to fill in all of this to allow me to hook up more of these um, energizing rods. So uh, I did go ahead and get some auto crafting set up for energizing rods. I, rods. I can just craft them on demand now, which is really, really great. So for example, this right here, I need at least one for each of these. Preferably, I would uh, want uh, a couple for them. But uh, for five, I think this will be fine. We'll have five right down the middle. So let's go ahead and craft specifically five. And we should have the resources to do this. Thankfully, the auto crafts were made so you don't have to craft like a starter and then craft a basic. You can actually just craft directly from uh, like the start. You can just say, hey, I need specific. Oh, maybe not. Maybe they did make it so it's consecutive. Nope, that's for the that's for the cables. That's right. The cables are not consecutive. So there's one. Hopefully that's enough. Uh, this is going to go right here, and that is going to power this, which I need to get hooked up. That's why it's not working right now. Get that to there. And this now should be powering this much faster. But we're going to run into a little problem, like, very fast. And that is, with power comes power cost. And you th you would think that we are uh, we're getting into power to produce more power, which is true but it also comes at a cost of significant power in its own right. Um, and that's where I might be making some dynamos here in a second. Now, I know I said dynamos, but I actually meant magmater, magmaters, mag, mag, yeah, magmaters, <laughs> magmaters. Um, okay, to make these, it's uh, just simply requesting the similar items we had, just do some auto crafting. Um, but at the point of just blazing alone, we can produce 800, FE or RF per tick on uh, just a single one. And we have unlimited lava, so that is not a problem. Um, now, the nitro can produce 20,000. That is a lot. Uh, however, nitro does cost uh, nether stars, which we would have to automate at some point. Um, so, with all that being said, uh, I just need to get some auto craft set up for this. I know everything comes down to auto craft with this mod because. You, you don't want to spend your time doing all the like consecutive uh, crafts. It's just you want to let this thing do the crafts for you. I think I think that's the way to go about doing this. So setting up a pattern for each one of the different tiers all the way up to the tier that, of course, you want to go to is the way to do this. Um, now, I, of course, want to let all of the other crafts go on that I have going right now. So I need to check here. Yep. Does seem like all of those are done. So if I head back down here, fill this in, let's see if we can't craft, I don't know, let's do four for right now. I think that would be more than enough to keep up with everything. Four of these magmaters. Let's see, this is the right tier, right? Yeah, 800. 
Let's do four of them for right now. Let's see. We're missing clay and a little bit of redstone. Oh, we're far from missing redstone. Ah, that's one thing I was wondering. Did I have a recipe for redstone blocks? And I apparently don't. Now, clay, on the other hand, that makes a lot of sense. So I now have all of the magmators that I'm going to need. And let's go ahead and set them down. Uh, because at the moment, I don't really have a... I, I, I think this is going to work. I don't really know exactly how they function fully. Um, do they need water? That is something that I'm just now, I think, realizing. Um, let's get a bucket. Let's see. I mean, because if they need water, that's not a big deal. Let's see, we should be able to make lava pretty quickly. All right, so lava's in there. Um, oh no, that's just the power bar, and it's just consuming the lava. Okay, well, that's super simple, because all we need is our ender tank here. And so we can place that there. Let's change it to the lava one, which by just placing that there, perfect. Now we have lava and let's get our pipes over. And we just pipe this here, just like that. And for some reason, why can't I place the, why can't I place the ender tank? What, can it only be pulled from the top or bottom? That just seems kind of odd, but okay, I guess that's, that is the case. Only the top or bottom from this block is allowed. No other way. You're not allowed to do anything else. Okay, so with that, that should start pulling lava out. I don't know if by default, is this going to be fast enough to fill these? Oh my gosh, I don't even need upgrades on this. That is awesome. So with these combined together, we're going to be producing 32,000? RF, right? 800 and 806. No, actually, we're producing more than that. Nope, I, I was definitely right. 30, 3200 quick maths got it done. Yeah, so we should be producing, if these are producing uh, at their max efficiency, that'll be perfect. That is going to be plenty of power. And that is all going to be sent over to one flux point. Um, I am going to clear out all of this so that way I can access this easily. Now, by default, all of these energy pipes only allow 256 FE in. Um, and I'm going to need a little bit more than that. So, let's get this all cleared. And I think I'm going to put that back here. So, this will plug in back here. And all of these are going to need upgrades. Yep, I can already tell you that. Boop. And then make sure these are all set to extract. But at least the base upgrade of this being the uh, the iron version is actually worth it. So hit shift to go ahead and place all these in. And this is going to allow 1024 FE in, which is just enough to supply our line. And then this right here just needs to be connected to our main network. And now we have residual power coming in that should be enough to hopefully power all of our new stuff that we are playing with, with power. Now, I do want to take this moment to ask you guys a question. What do you want to see me potentially cover in this mod pack? What is something that you may not know very much about, about and would love for me to do the research and uh, and set up? Because uh, I would love to make that video. I would love to make the videos that you guys are interested to see. And so let me know down in the comments what part of this mod pack, what mod you would love to see covered. And I'm going to try my best to get that video out. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button. And of course, it's time to thank the supporter of today's video. And that huge thanks, by the way, is going to go to, if I can, oh my gosh, I always mess this up. Thanks, that's going to new V. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member. Now, I would love to introduce you guys to my Discord, but at this point, you probably have heard about it. But if you haven't, it is discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. And I would love for you to join my amazing community over there where you can ask questions, and, uh, or just hang out with some new peeps. I do hang out in the voice channels all the time, so I would love to chill out with you guys. Also, be sure to check out the Twitch, where it's, an, it's another great place to interact with me as a content creator. If you're interested, I've been playing Vault Hunters SMP over on there with uh, likes of Iscal uh, that you may know, Captain Sparkles, just a few, um, just all kinds of cool peeps over there. So I recommend checking that out, and uh, I would love to see you guys and hang out with you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Of course, leave a comment down below. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And of course, guys, I will see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.